Hey guys, what's up? Ruben here from the Midnight Garage. Welcome to another episode of Does It Matter? Now, as you guys all know, I'm trying to get this car to do a sub 9 minute Nürburgring lap time and I'm replacing stuff in order to make it better and faster, of course. Now, last episode I've replaced my brake fluid by Delta 5.1 brake fluid and as you've seen, I've done some extensive testing. And after the episode, I noticed that my brakes are pretty much gone, at least up front. So, I want to replace the pads and discs, but as you will see later on, I ran into some issues. But anyway, since this is a brake upgrade video, we're first going to do some different tests. So, uh, let me show you what we're going to do. What am I going to do? I'm going to accelerate from there, I'm going to accelerate until 100 kilometers per hour and then I'm going to use this lamppost as a braking point, brake as hard as I can and then end up somewhere there. Sounds pretty easy, right? I did this five times in total and then I marked the points where the car came to a stop with some chalk paint and with this information I will be able to calculate the average 100 to 0 stopping distance with my stock brakes. Yeah, I just realized that having yellow lights at night and yellow paint wasn't a very smart idea. But as you can see, there are some brake points. I've got five of them in total. So now it's time to swap the brakes and see what the difference is. Here we have the old brakes. Like I said before, I don't want to switch to a brick brake kit just yet. I want to save that for a later video, mainly because I need to upgrade the 14 inch wheels for bigger ones. But um, yeah, these are stock and I just wanted to do a brake pad and brake disc upgrade. So let me show you what I got. Here we have the old discs and like I said, I wanted to go for a disc upgrade. So I got one of the better brakes that you can get performance related. And those are Rambo Max. Here we have the old brake pads and I wanted to go for some upgrades. So I got some Ferrodo Racing DS2500 brake pads. And I think you are seeing a slight issue right now. As you can see, the original brake pads are quite a bit smaller than the Ferrodo ones. So what was the problem? Well, first up, you couldn't get any performance oriented original brake pads anymore for a 1986 Honda Civic as it's simply just too old. And secondly, performance brake discs, nah, you also couldn't get them. Luckily on the Gen 1 blog, I read that you could plug and play fit some 242 second generation Honda CRX brakes on it. So I went looking and yeah, I could get Ferrodos for that, but the Brembo Max series that was discontinued as well because it was too old. I could only get the Brembo Max for the 262 C-Rex VTEC ones. And I didn't want to do that because that was a little bit too big for me because I don't want to do a big brake kit as I want to save that for the next episode. So how did I solve this issue? Well, here we have the old brake caliper and here we have the new one. I went to a scrapyard and got some calipers from a Civic EG4. Those have 24 centimeter brakes, whereas the original Civic has 23 centimeter brakes. So technically it's a big brake kit, but it's the smallest upgrade I could have done in order to at least get some performance parts. Um, fortunately, the scrapyard was quite big. So I simply removed these calipers from a Civic EG4 installed them on a third generation Civic that was also there and luckily I saw that it fitted and yeah that's the good thing about Honda it's pretty much all Lego and there's a lot of documentation from any Civic ranging from like 1988 until the 2000s but anything 1983 till 1987 it's really hard to find information on it. There used to be a forum for it, Red Pepper Racing, but that forum is down and all the information is gone. So that kind of sucks. But luckily now I know that I can fit EG4 brakes with some nice Brembos and Frodo's on it as well. Ah, yeah. This will all look so much better. That actually looks pretty good. I'm very happy about that. Now it's time to put the wheels back on. Good news and bad news. The good news is that the brakes might be plug and play. The bad news is they rub slightly against my Mugen CF48 wheels. So I can't run them right now. I need to order a small spacer and then they will hopefully fit. Probably like a two millimeter spacer would be fine. But even though the Mugen CF48 don't fit, I still have some Mugen MR5s laying around, so for now this will do, at least for the next couple of days until the spacer is in. So 
So which wheel do you guys prefer, the Mugen CF48 or the Mugen MR5? I'm not quite sure about which one I like most. The spacers are in. Now let's see if I can install my CF48s again. Yeah, 48 fit again, so that's great. Now it's time for me to run in the pads. Usually the run-in period is, uh, well, quite long, but fortunately I've used racing brake pads and they have a short run-in period, which I will throw on the screen right now for you to read. And after that, it's time for me to check out some results and see how much better the car brakes. And I'm very curious to see the result. Running in the new pads was pretty easy. As you guys all know, it can take quite a while to run in regular pads. But since these Ferrotos were made to be raced quickly during race sessions, they were good to go in less than 10 minutes. The brakes are all run in and ready for testing. But first, let's go to the expert and see what he has to say. So I hope that uh, we're gonna show you the break. Uh, I think there's no enough to play. But I'm gonna do that. I go a little bit faster, I'm going in the corner. But I think we can still go into the last section. Right, well, um, I at least hope for a 10% improvement in breaking distance. But uh, time to find out. Well guys, I didn't bring my big camera with me, but I just finished the braking test Mark II and I've noticed something interesting. If you look closely here, these white lines are the brake points, the five brake points I've had with the new brakes. And here you can see a yellow line, here you can still see a yellow line, here here and granted I believe I've seen it here here next to the white one there's still a yellow one so the yellow brakes were all over the place but once I did the brake tests with the new brakes so with the white lines it's very contained I think it's like within one meter so that is very interesting and I did not expect that result but it kind of makes sense okay I got the numbers right here are you ready here we have the old brake distance. This is from 100 kilometers to zero in meters. Here we have the braking distance in meters with an average of 33.352 with the old brakes. Then with the new brakes, here we have the numbers again with an average of 30.99 meters. So that means that the average distance with the old brakes was 33.35 meters and with the new brakes was 30.99 meters, which means a 7.63% improvement, which is great. But now for the interesting stuff, the variation in distance. Now with the old brakes, it was between 30.04 meters and 36.48 meters, which means a variation of 17.65%. But with the new brakes, it was a distance between 30.12 meters and 31.53 meters, which was a variation of 4.47%. Which means da, 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 that in terms of precision, the brakes are 294.76% improved. So this means that my new brakes are almost three times as precise as my old brake setup, which is perfect for a track. So I figured, you know what, we're going to do some laps for good measure. But as you can see right now, things didn't really go that well. Yeah, as you've just seen, it was still a damn track. It had rained earlier that day. And on the second lap of my first attempt, I locked up completely and I headed straight towards a lamppost. And luckily in a split decision, I decided to pump my brakes a little bit. Therefore, I regained control and managed to steer away and only narrowly with like four or five kilometers per hour hit the curb. But fortunately, it's like a diagonal curb. So it didn't cause any damage. So yeah, I was very lucky about that. 
So after that I decided to start again and do another set of laps because naturally my brakes don't overheat anymore so I can just keep doing laps now instead of stopping after six laps. So I did another six laps, got some times and now it's time to show you the results. We're back at the trusty graph. Here are the three most important lap times for today. Here we have the very first set of laps I've did, the benchmark on a dry summer day. Here we have the laps I've done, which were the fastest laps I've done so far after proper engine maintenance on a dry summer day as well. And then the rest was all in the rain, so yeah, that was obviously slower. But here was the last set of times with the rain tires in the wet. And now we get damp weather with some new brakes. So where do you expect it to be somewhere? Well, let me show you. It's right here. So. That's actually kind of interesting. With my new brakes, I am just as fast on the damp track as I was originally on a warm summer day. So we are definitely getting somewhere, especially if you consider that my brakes don't overheat after six laps anymore and I can continue for way longer. So uh, I am very curious to see what the results will be on a dry day. As for estimates, I was hoping for a 10% improvement and as for the expert, yeah, I had no idea what he was saying. If you could understand it, post it in the comments because then clearly you understand more than I do. But yeah, let me show you the results anyways. The actual improvement was 3.82%, which means that I was off by 6.18%. And as for the theoretical best Nürburgring lap time, I still haven't beaten my best time, which was on a dry summer day. So yeah, I'm not gonna change this for now. So guys, to conclude, a performance brake upgrade, does it matter? Yes, it does. But not as much in a decrease in braking distance, but more in an increase in braking precision, which is not a result I expected, but a result I'm very happy with nonetheless. So yeah guys, that's it for today. This video was brought to you by TDG. Check them out on Instagram, the link is in the description. Next videos are gonna be some more interesting parts, so uh, stay tuned for that. And if there's gonna be a dry day somewhere here in the Netherlands in the next few days, I am going to do a new set of laps because I want to see how this car is performing right now on a dry, preferably a slightly warm day. But it's still Holland, we never know what happens. So yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.